go to the modeling part we in in the this setup we have did nothing just a small voroni fracture and this wall we are going to increase the size of this wall so let's say is it five and four so five could be seven or eight and four will be six not that much i think six will look good okay so the wall is big and in that case we need some window a sliding sliding window that you see in uh, different places Okay, uh, if you will see the SDA that was made by the side effect, let me show you. So, RBD. So, RBD configure. So you know when we are putting this HD, it's calculating down there. You can see. So that tell how heavy that HD is. I'll tell you why this is calculating. Even putting a node, it's taking that much of time. What will happen if we we'll connect something to it? So here you will see like they are or they are, they have given a three different way of fracturing concrete, glass, and wood. So that's a general concept or that's a general material that we deal. Concrete is the simple one, but cluster and constraint are the important thing. Glass, simple one, but cluster constraint and same with the wood. So we'll see like um, not in the way how they have created, but in a very simple and straightforward way because we ha also have to see our computer should be very light, not like them. So here they have created one HDA, one level, that's a one level of HDA, then these are the node that's running on, on the bottom of it. You see these four red color nodes, these are the actual thing, the concrete, the glass, the wood. So let's go inside the wood. Okay, then we are again. We have a lot of setup there. RBD unpack, RBD pack, RBD pack. Generally, they started everything from the Boolean fracture. And you know how the Boolean fracture is made up of. So, if we'll go to the RBD unpack or either of the nodes that are AGDA, so there are three, four more levels. So you'll we'll find like you will end up with the four or oh sorry, it could be a five, six, maximum six level of HDS are made. On the top of it, you are changing the value. To learn this HDA, how this works, you will find a lot of the tutorial in the YouTube. If you really want to learn, go and find each and every tutorial and understand like how they connect with those things with other HDS. But in our chapter, unfortunately, this training are not there. So I can help you out if you have created something, but we cannot show you how we connect those things. But I can give you how and where you can learn it. So yeah, YouTube have a lot of, lot of tutorials. Even those who know the basics should need, they, are, they have also uploaded the video. Nobody is going to tell you in that video how this thing is made above, but they will tell you what are the connection and what are the output. Anyway, so as I see, 
two different type of materials are there. One more is glass, another one is the wood. So let's create both the thing. We'll work on this thing. The first thing I need to. I need to have a bullion that is going to create a window at the center of this wall. We could create another box or we could create the transform that will take this value. Let's take the transform. Now to create the frame, so for them I'm going to use a, a blast node. So we'll take any surface, uh, let's say the front one is uh, So zero. OK, so that could be the glass. I'll use a poly wire to bring out my wood. So poly wire. I'm trying to make this thing procedural as much as, much as I can do. 
some of the thing won't be um, but let it be because we are not going to create the sda of this so but what was the use of procedure in some time in future if you need to change anything we could do it with the help of it so it's not like a block or the attach concept it's all like boolean and all these concepts are related to each other so poly wire poly wire So if you see the Boolean thing that was started from the border of it. So if you put this wood. So that will intersect the wall and it will go inside it. So we have to create something that's outside if not inside. So in that case, we need to scale this value in the X and Y setup. So we'll see by We'll keep on watching it and we'll in that case we'll scale it down. So uh, why? Sorry, this need to be done with the center pivot. So I have already created my setup. What you have to write is dollar C X C Y C Z. Write it one time, save it in your folder. So whenever the thing will be required, you can use it. So let's put a point nine around figure number. Now there will be we need need a space in between both the thing, but not that much. So that it will be visible. But we never know how much. Scale we are going to do with this object, so let's scale it the thing which you want. So it could be like point two. Uh, that's become too much. Let's make point fifteen. Mm, that's fine. One thirteen. Okay, that's cool. Then uh, you see, do you have any spaces between both the things? It's still there, so the value is perfect. And then we'll change the value, same value in the y-axis. So point ninety, point nine. OK, that's have become the wood. And we need to. Pull that down. Here so that will be like a, a X, Y, Z. So the G value. OK, so that will be our frame. And the uh, glass thing is required, so we have created this thing for the glass. So, so this is the wood. This need to be glass. So the glass should not intersect inside the wood. So we need one more transform.
Okay, so we have a glass now. We'll put a poly extrude to make the thickness for the glass. Okay, so now we have all the three surfaces. That this one is glass, wood, and this third one is the concrete. If needed, you can change the color of it, you can change the shape of the node, whatever you like that will remind to you what these surfaces are. So let's change the color of it. C is the shortcut to change the color of your object you could do, make it anything. I'm going to make something dark blob or black. OK, so we'll work one by one. The first one will deal with the glass. Let's change the name it to glass. So if we'll go to the images, we'll see what we have there. Mm, we could take any pattern. Uh, let's say the more realistic one is. Uh, this this uh, you see the a fracture like a concrete. This kind of glass is usually you'll find in the car or something. That's. That's the name of that uh, glass. If I can't remember it, it it's a plastic seat that attached with this glass so that won't allow to break a glass into the small fragment neither that could go inside the eyes or in the body once it will get break so that's the reason the car and car glass are behaving different way but normal glass uh, we could take this example so this this is very simple example of the a glass and that resemble us little bit like a spider man Spider-Man, the the wire of the Spider-Man. Web. Like, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Who is still telling that? I said web, web. Web, not web, but uh, a design, the pattern that was made on the suit of the Spider-Man, and obviously the web of the spider. So they generate something like this, not something like this, but the pattern was uh, matching something with the spider wave. And same with the pattern that Spider-Man have made on their um, uh, suit. W what is the logic? The lo logic is when the glass uh, fracture, it always start from somewhere. It's not like all the glass fracture at the same time. And that starting point is a, a place where that uh, momentum or the collision things add or uh, start with very high intensity and that could be like a bullet a bullet when bullet touch that glass that place the small place start fracturing the connection of the glass throughout its body so first it break then the that is the that's the circle you can say the shock wave so that's then another thing then the third shock wave that was generated here then the fourth shock wave and that's how it break. So we have a very realistic example of it. Okay, we'll try to achieve the same thing. The first thing is you need to know from where your fractures are starting, like where the pressure of collision are too high. So if I could remember. Uh, 
Okay, I I should not play with the length of it, but yes. So you see the bottom part is the place where the collision is going to take started. We'll work something there. One thing you need to do it. Like if I'm playing this thing. Whenever they create a wall. Wall never create from the surface in the real world. It always start beneath the surface. And that we call the root of that glass and that is hidden in the real world. But every building have that root. They create a building by digging it uh, like few meters below the ground and that help us a building not to fall. Especially when we have a earthquake or something like that. So for that thing, let me show you. I should not show that thing in the between of the glass thing, but let me. OK. So all these objects are now now it is converted into the with the assemble node. It is converted into the pack symmetry. So pack is a very helpful. Primitive because it always generate a single point. And uh, before pack, it was very complicated for us to write a VEX code because in that case we have to write the VEX code in each of the point of that object. But now we have one point, so it help us a lot. So we'll create that with a simple wrangle. Okay, that will be the point and. Uh, we for that we need a surface also the surface could be a simple grid We'll change the color of it something so that we can understand this is not the part of this thing. So something like uh, purple, blue, okay, blue is good. And then uh, connect this thing in the second input, the blue one. We'll use a very easy function that's X, Y, Z base tense. So we have X, Y, Z to R, G, B. That's an interesting one. We need to convert our X, Y, Z to the R, G, B sometime. OK, uh, it's not saying any help file. Why, man? OK, that name is X, Y, Z distance, not X, Y, Z. So we got some help here. We have a two input. One says the geometry and then other say the thing which you want to Calculate so the geometry will be my one in first input and the calculation is my position. We want this this XYZ export something like give a return something and we need to store that thing in, in my variable that will be the vector. And we could write the name like base. OK, let's execute the program. It has given us a return value here and now. Now. OK, we want to see it what it has given so. We could uh, use a. Uh, what I was telling to uh, Drew about the ternary. So that ternary function we could write here. So we could write at the rate, at the rate CD. CD is equal to. Let's put some value to it. Let's make red. 
so zero zero and then this will be my second first condition then we okay this will be my condition the effect of the condition the first will be something like uh, if this is greater than equal to c h f good the last will be zero as, as it is let's run this code something is missing here okay so we need to put a question mark and here we need to put a colon no So base is the vector. This is a float. We need to find base dot y. So that will be the float. Now it's fine. Let's run this. Okay, the problem is not with the code. The problem is with the pack geometry. We could not visualize pack geometry directly in the viewport. Guys, you know what? Sometimes I need a help from you too. But you sit silently and watch this thing as a tutorial that's running in your computer. That's not a good thing. I'm a living human being. You can talk to me. You can help me. Or you have any problem, we could discuss and find a best way. So we need to unpack it if we really want to see the color. So pack, pack, unpack. And we need to transfer our attribute. That's the CD. Now let's change this value. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. We'll reverse this thing. So greater than and let's reverse it to less than. Good. OK, so this is the good. And we will what we will do is uh, this this second line was only for our visualization and there is no use of that second line but leave it as it is the third thing is going to rewrite a active command so that says like this thing is active and that thing is not so that 
active will be one but not here let's put that thing in the second line so that that will be a useful thing so right after that So you see we got one value that's active and other values are zero. So these are the active value and uh, most of the values are inactive. We want to return something. So instead of putting value right here, will write over value in the position of zero. And that comma, we don't need it, but we need to write I, the strand for integer. Okay, I think this this working. So we have a one value where the active things are there and then we have a active zero. That's the red part is a active where like red part is the inactive thing. That's a zero and the white y part is the active. So the active is going to simulate and the inactive is not. We can see that thing uh, in the in the real world. <laughs> like sorry in the reward i'm saying we can see that thing by simulating is this working or not wow Why I have connected the unpack? That is only for the visualization purpose and nothing else. So let's think it's done. Let's see. Okay, even though how strong our ball will be or how how heavy it is considering our mass, this thing will be not going to break this wall if that is collided somewhere here. But in case if this thing will collide somewhere here, this will break all this part of the wall. Now the value of our strength 
in the constant that are too much, like it's going to multiply by three or two. If you write five, that could be 15. If you're going to write 15, that could be the three times of what we have here. Because the ground is holding now. Earlier, it was not like that. OK, so that thing is completed. Let's go back to our thing that is class. OK, let me save the file. We never know what will happen. So today is. Uh, OK, it's written already there. So today is 13th August. OK. So we'll start working with the glass. We know like where we are. The collision is taking place. The bottom part of it will play with that thing. This is the poly extrude. If I'll do the R and D, that will be make confuse to you guys because you're not giving your idea there. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to generate a point. We'll change the position accordingly. I was trying to create something like a procedural setup, but it will take time. So let's create a point. And we can uh, use a node that we call a match size. So now with this node, we could. We would made this point procedural. So. So you see it always generates something at the center of the point in the same position in the X, Y, Z axis too. And uh, you could use a offset to change your thing if you need it. So X, Y, Z and uh, we can move it somewhere at the bottom of it because the collision is going to take place in that area. Or we could, we could change it later. So let's put it zero and uh, here we'll be. From here on, we are going to create. Okay, the node which the node has did, it's an HDF. I was trying to achieve the same result with this warp to find a center of this thing and then move the point on that position. Anyway, so here uh, from here we will use a copy to point node. Or we will use a for each node. That will be more procedural. So for each. For each point. Or let's create anything, everything from the scratch. So block. Begin and block end. Both of them need the connection between each other, so it need this input. And uh, it needs its input. Now. I want to face what you want to bring it here, so I want to face the point. So that is the point and that's one point. But you want, you know what? I don't want to face anything. So it will be like uh, feedback. 
I want to create a circle. We want to run this circle few number of times. First, let scale it very small, and then we want to run it like it's already. I think it's running ten times. So let me see. No, it's not. Present method by count feedback merge is iteration. So then uh, we got a 10 times. So we are running this thing 10 times. Okay, 120 point. Now we need one more node. Okay, so the question might Houdini is a total or uh, the whole software was based on VEX and you know VEX is nothing just a C language. So here the concept of this block was also made in this made with the C language. So this will be the initial value. This will be the end value like I plus plus. We need a middle value that we call the OK. This will be the conditional value. This is the first value. We need the iteration value only. So we could create it simply by creating a create meta import node and this is going to give me the iteration like i plus plus so we have that data in the detail class let's make it x what we have talked so and now i want to scale it this thing based on the iteration and for that we can use a python again uh, a vex or if we'll go to the simple way, we could use a transform node. So here we'll write the detail class and we'll bring the iteration. So D E T A I L detail is a function of the S script. And here you you need to write uh, bring the input of my node. So you know we have some interesting procedure to achieve that thing. Every node uh, from Houdini 16, I think, have this sphere parameter option. Sphere parameter option in every node Houdini does have. So this is a very interesting setup. You could you only have to use uh, import the data there, and then in the setup you can write minus one. I hope this will work and then the function which you want to bring that iteration. And that iteration is a scalar value, so we will write zero. No, it's not working. OK, there is a mistake in the bracket. Good. So it's working, you know, that minus one thing. Uh, you see this purple col color of connection. That's not a brown. It's a purple. So it says like uh, your path is connected to with this node and this node. OK, at the end uh, we, we want to delete all those surface and we want to leave the point there. So we'll use that node. So this is looking good. Something very close to the wave of the spider, but this very 
clear it has a very clear pattern we don't want that we need to remove those pattern so we'll use a uh, warp We'll simply use any noise and we'll add that noise to the current value. So let's say a noise, simple one is the anti-aliasing noise. Then use a add function. Make sure you are returning the 1D value, I mean scalar value. So connect that thing. We don't want to change anything in the G axis, but only in the Y and X. So again, we need some conversion nodes. So vector to float and uh, float to vector. So no changes in this G axis. We want to change in X and Y. So we'll put two add node. So one will be for the X. And one, okay, this output is coming in the vector. Okay, that thing is not required. You can directly add this value to this setup. And one thing is for the Y. And then we'll connect this thing to the position. Wow. Okay, so the, the amount is too much. We'll play with the amount now. Frequency. The amplitude. Okay, we have one problem here. The thing is, the setup is directly adding a value in the positive thing, not in the negative thing. To make that negative, what you could do is you could create or play with the parameter, parameter to generate anything from negative. The simple way is we can separate minus. First, we'll make this thing. Uh, okay, you can subtract this thing with minus 0.5 if this thing is coming in the range from 0 to 1. Neither we have to go with the set up like some of the noise generator value between point minus one to positive point one. Okay, uh, simply we'll add a add constant node.
Okay, this is looking good. Fine. No more to waste the time. So, yes, our uh, setup is almost completed. We'll change accordingly when we'll not get a realistic output. So, the last thing is like using this whole setup for the for this geometry. The position is not in the position of that object, so we have to this and what is doing here. So instead of this point, we why we have created this point, I don't know. So instead of that one, we'll put that thing right there. Good. Uh, go to scale it a little bit so fine the last but not least for any fracture Whoa, that's really beautiful. Okay, uh, let's put a let's put this process uh, visualization process process visualization node. What's the name of the node? Visualize. Sorry, let's say exploded view. OK, we got it. Uh, the, the pattern that need to generate the crack in the glass. My object is not colliding here. My object is colliding somewhere here or colliding with the concrete somewhere here. The concrete is going to push this wall in this position and the crack will start from here or something. So it will put push, uh, pull it down in the y axis. Guys, give me a moment, just two minutes. OK, fine. So going to increase the number. Let's make 12. Okay, so this is fine. So this is the place where fracturing is started of the glass and it's going the shock wave is going.
from there to the heavy places and that's creating the crack like four or five cracks are generated and those cracks the thing is generated you can play more with it like the difference between these things are uh, okay but you can play with i don't want to make it more random neither it won't it left this pattern it will become something like this that is here in the left hand side so this is a very interesting way of creating a glass pattern and you see how fast it it, it is if you would have used that sda you get stuck in just changing the parameter only so the glass we have did now we need to complete a uh, wood And here we are going to create the wood. Okay, so you know how the wood gets fracture. Wood also have some pattern. Wood has nothing to do from where your force is applied because you wood is always a flexible thing. It's not so hard like a glass. So even though fracture we are going to put push the thing right from there, it will bend down. and it's not going to fracture in only it will going to fracture when the bend value of the wood will cross its limit and that could be happen anywhere so we're going to fracture a normal in a normal position not we are going to create a soft wick like a glass like a glass and uh, for that we can fracture a wood in all of the places equally but wood is wood it's not a concrete it has some pattern pattern is like it's create a splinter splinter on each thing so let me show you some images of wood glass wood okay so then the first image you see this setup this crack thing is or the second one third one fourth one this all are splinter and this is how wood break so we have to create exactly how it is look like here in the images so go back the fracture could be two time in this position two time in horizontal and two time in the vertical so that's also a trick a trick of putting a point in a way so that it will generate our setup So we are going to use a, a one point. If I'll put two or three point, is this position it's going to fracture this part and this part? So how could we put a point there? one easy way is uh, create a surface there with the help of boolean we will create a plane will boolean it the part that is left inside at it will generate the point on it that's one way easy way the other way is uh, will create the iso offset okay let me show you something so this is my a box this is a box 
and the length of the box like leg of any any uh, table or chair and that is made up of wood so i'll increase the length to something like three four okay so what we're going to do is we'll use the iso offset so i'm use a process that we could apply there then we'll use a scatter node then simply voroni fracture but before using the voroni fracture we'll scale it down and then we'll use a voroni fracture let's see what we are getting it here Okay, so now it's looking like the fracture that has happened to the wood. So the fracture is happened on the center of, of this wood and it has created the thing. So that is how wood fracture guys and the same procedure we are going to apply right there on on the frame so you see we are scaling down this thing on the one axis in the y the object is quite like it's it's in the extended in the y axis but what about the horizontal things so we'll divide both the thing We'll create one setup for the X and then on the Y. Okay, so one more thing I need to tell you. In this thing, the fracture is happening from the center of it. Let's say if the fracture will be happening in the two places. So what we are going to do that. So simply we are going to create a duplicate node.
So we now we have a fracture that's happening from the two places, one top and the bottom. And uh, we'll scale it down like minus 0.5. Or uh, we'll play with it. So let's see. Okay, we'll stick with this process and then So you see this is a place where the first fracture is happening and uh, in case uh, nothing which we have duplicate So the two fractures are going except the middle one, so that's a issue. Okay, so this is the normal process and we're going to follow this step right there. First, we need to divide this thing that will work horizontal and the 
vertical thing because our transform is going to work one thing at a time. We cannot put transform here also on this step also. So here we can do in the X axis, then we can do in the Y axis the transform, the scaling down that point. We'll use a centroid node. Strict centroid. We'll use two plane. Both will be the grade one. So we'll just copy to point. Can rotate it in G axis 45 degree. It's fine, but we need to put a center pivot function. Okay, this is perfectly in the 45, but the value is not perfect for our window so we need to play slightly with the okay this fine and uh, we'll use a merge node one more transform Okay, the feel of the X-Men. Huh, good, uh, almost it is completed. We'll use a Boolean and divide it. See, this all setup are 90% procedural. In case you will change the position of the window, it's stick to it. If you change the shape of the window, stick to it. Like say, you want to uh, scale the in the Y axis or G axis, it will stick to it. So it has some logic that's connected to it. Okay, the first surface we could put, first input we can put as a surface. Or the second one as a surface, uh, make it solid. Okay, done. We could see with the exploded view. Okay, let me increase the scale of the GUI. Remove those things that are not needed here. So let's, where it's gone. We are working in Houdini. 
yeah it's 19 so double store okay so we could use this exploded view okay so something is not perfect here but it's okay it doesn't matter so we are going to work on this horizontal then the vertical But you know what? I think this process is generating a lot of nodes. I don't want that. We could use a simpler way of doing the thing. So simple way is the creating a surface. Creating a surface right inside it with the help of the Boolean will do with this one okay so let's little bit of changes on this thing You could increase uh, put number of times, like how many things you want. Okay, so. Okay, we got it. Okay, so then we'll use scatter on surface. Amount of point will be like 100 or less than that. 50, 40. So they, they are exactly on the surface and we, we don't want that. We want slight changes should be there. So what we could do is now we're going to run a for each loop and in each position we are going to create a sphere and on that, those sphere we're going to create that thing so these things are you see these things are one primitive so if we'll run up for each primitive block Then in this primitive, we are going to create Let me see
Okay, so... I'm not using a for each loop. We'll try to see if the results are good or not. If not, we'll use a for each loop. Okay, so it's not good. Uh, we have to work in each detailing. So we'll go with this for each loop. Let's see. So we each time we are get, getting a surface. And on this surface, you can create a point. On that point, we'll create a sphere. So the point is not required. We would directly create the sphere. So sphere right there. Good. Now we have a sphere on each surface. Then we'll use this thing as offset. Now when we have uh, our object separately, so we can scale it according to our needs. But be sure to scale in the overall axis, not in X and Y. Mm. 
okay one thing okay this is not good because we forget to use the keyboard thing so let's put it So if we scale it, it's going to happen on each point separately. So let's put that thing. On the other hand, if we put point one, point two. So this is generating a little bit what we are expecting. Okay, so very close what we are expecting. We can go with the one surface also, like here we have bypassed the duplicate node. This is one surface way. One thing you can see like how fast this process is compared to any other process in the real time. You can see the changes what we are expecting. 